Welcome. Uh, over three days, we are celebrating food processing in World Food India 2023. And food processing and food packaging is almost synonymous. You can't have one without the other. Today, this panel has come together to discuss on the innovations, the roadmaps, and the way forward for food packaging. We have with us Dr. Vimal Katyar, Dean, Research and Development and Professor, Chemical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, and Chairman. He is also on the panel for packaging for FSSI New Delhi. He is going to be the moderator today. Also with us is Mr. Casio Simos, Managing Director, Tetra Pak. We have Ms. Sujata Jayaraman, HUL, Vice President, Food and R&D. And then we have with us Ms. Devyani Rana, Coca-Cola, Vice President, Public Affairs, Communications and Sustainability. And along with them, we have Mr. Chetan Udeshi, Ball Beverage Packaging, and also accompanying him is Mr. Ganeshan. So with that, I would request Dr. Vimal Katyar to set the context for the session and uh, take things forward, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, thank you very much and very good morning to one and all uh, joined here. We have a very distinguished uh, panelist here today from uh, different organizations uh, and those who are really having a good stake uh, in, in, on a in a market, especially as far as the food packaging are concerned. So now it's a, you, we, we understand that it's a very important segment and the sector in, the, uh, in as far as a, for industry as well as for consumer are concerned. Uh, so we are going to hopefully we are going to deliber uh, deliberate uh, uh, that how to move forward on this and what are the challenges specifically we will be going to focus on the challenges is in food packaging and how we have to look into the sustainability aspect uh, of this material as we all understood uh, 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 when we talk about the plastics uh, and we know that around 40 percent of the plastic used to go for our packaging applications uh, and when we can see the food packaging, out of it, 50% goes for a food packaging applications. And if you're really going to talk about where the plastic comes, uh, and if you really talk about the beginning of life options of these kind of uh, materials, uh, we understood that most of the around 99% covering from the petrochemical feed stock. So that is the one aspect of the plastic when we we'll use for a packaging, and specifically here as a food packaging application. Second is that when we talk about the end of life option of these packages, uh, when we talk about uh, what to do, what are the different mode and means by which we could able to bring it really into the circularity, that is again a very important aspect in today's scenario that has to be discussed and deliberated and common consensus has to be brought in, uh, not, uh, I mean to say keeping all the stakeholders at, at same platform. So that's a very important uh, aspect. And uh, now we understood that uh, the, 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 when we talk about uh, petrochemicals, feed stock based polymers or bio-based polymers, we understood when we go for a bio-based polymer, we generally used to support a carbon, shorter carbon cycle compared to the fossil based. That is what my understanding. And when we go with the, uh, end of life option when we talk about the compostability or we talk about the biodegradation <coughs> we generally would like to support help the carbon which has to go out from the environmental compartment so we are basically going to deliberate that this very niche very important area of food packaging between these these two aspects and how we will going to <coughs> bring it to, to the effective and optimum life cycle assessment of the food packaging. So with this uh, opening remark and uh, uh, my imminent panelists are here and uh, we will be going to deliberate uh, on these aspects and a lot of as we understood when we talk about uh, these aspects as well as the circularity, uh, now a lot of innovations are required whether it is an R&D institution or the, uh, the organizations who are practicing these materials and it has to be brought into the, uh, for the consumers. 
I really felt that the consumers, if, as far as the country are concerned, our consumers are not much aware about these kind of the packaging. I mean to say they, they, they are a consumer, they are using these materials and they're bringing to, the, uh, to, to its fate. So, less uh, the awareness also is a very important aspect among the uh, society that how to brought in and uh, in order to optimize and bring it the, the holistic solution of uh, uh, food packaging. Not only this, but there are uh, aspects where we have to be careful about the safety of the food when we are bringing the package in contact with the food. That is also a very important aspect and that's what the regulations has to be in enforced or it has to be adjusted in a way that it should not harm to the uh, uh, our civic society as far as the food is concerned. So with this opening remark, uh, now I would really uh, request to our panel to introduce themselves that what they exactly do it into the uh, bringing these kind of innovation, uh, innovated uh, packaging and what they are doing in their organization. So I request first to uh, 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 Mr. Keshio Simeos, uh, he is a managing director South Asia market for Tetra Pak, uh, India Private Limited. So I request you to please uh, uh, open, give your opening remark, especially as far as the Tetra Pak is concerned and in general for, for food pack. Yeah, please. Well, namaskar, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here and be invited for the, being in this session with all of you. Um, I want to spend these uh, first 10 minutes you know, in a, a bit of an interactive session. You know. I've been in India only five months right now, you know, and I'm still learning about the country. But uh, I, I do really want to know a bit more about the consumer side, you know, and all of you here, you are consumers, okay? So every year we run in Tetra Pak a survey that we call Tetra Pak Index, you know. This company being in 160 different countries, we take this opportunity to understand what are the trends that is happening around the world, you know, the global trends, and see if they are global or regional trends, and how are they moving? So two years ago, we had a, a Tetra Pak index related to sustainability. Okay. And uh, we did some uh, questions for, for the, around the world, and I want to check the results of those questions here as well. So when, when you Google climate change, you know, you can get from Google 2.8 billion results, okay? In October now, the World uh, uh, Health Organization, they released a figure that uh, today 3.6 billion people, they live in areas that are susceptible for climate change. It's half of the population. So it comes the first question. How many of you believe in climate change? All of you. How many of you don't care? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody is daring, huh? <laughs> and um, how about uh, moderately concerned? Nobody as well. Uh, just one. Yeah. So the, the result of the survey was 81% of the population around the world is really concerned about climate change. No? And there is another important index. Huh? That comes the second question. How many of you are buying a product based on sustainability credentials? Sometimes. Yeah. Not consciously. Yeah, right. Exactly. So one third of the population we found that now is you know, everybody, they are going to shop something or e-commerce, you know, they are concerned about uh, sustainability credentials. You know? So we companies have to take that in consideration. 
And the third and last question, how many of you would pay a bit more for a product that is more sustainable? Wow. <laughs> we have always the same answer. But in this case, there is a say-do gap, a very important say-do gap, that we always say that we are going to pay more, but at the end, we don't do it. Okay? So thanks for your collaboration, for your contribution. Well, Tetra Pak is a Swedish company. You know, we, have a, we are 72 years old. It was founded by Mr. Ruben Housing, this brilliant gentleman, you know, 72 years ago. You know, with this startup mindset, created the carton packaging. You know. But uh, we didn't stay only with the carton packaging within our business. You know, we expanded our business, and most of you, you know, know Tetra Pak for this package here. You know, we are much more than that. You know, we have a uh, processing equipment as well, services, so we can offer to our customers an end-to-end -end solution. You know. And. Uh, and uh, our mission, our vision, when he started the company, was to uh, making food safe available everywhere. Okay, and our mission has become protect food, protect people, and protect the planet. You know, and when we talk about protect the planet, you know, we really have in our uh, uh, as a strategic pillar, sustainab strong sustainability actions, you know, sust uh, sustainability action plan. Because, uh, I mean, we, we want to walk the talk, you know, and sustainability is something that, uh, you know, it's important for Tetra Pak and you see that it's important for the world. The companies that are not working in the sustainability side, I'm sorry to say that, but they will not survive. That's the real truth, okay? So in India, Tetra Pak is uh, 36 years now. Uh, we have a world-class manufacturing uh, factory in Pune. Um, and uh, awarded by the Institute of, uh, uh, Japanese Institute of Plant Management. It's a, it's a very nice site, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And we have invested a lot in this country to build the recycling chain. In the last 20 years, we are investing on that. Okay, more than 100 crores, and only in the three last years, you know, 25 crores to make this recycling chain even more robust. You know? We have uh, collection uh, centers in 26 uh, uh, states and union territories here, more than 30 recycling centers, 15 Indian armed contingents in the north and northeast area of, uh, of India, you know, collecting also cartons. We are close to 50% in terms of collection and recycling, uh, and we have seven recyclers in, this, uh, in India. But you, you, you can ask, well, I mean, this is part of EPR. Why Tetra Pak is, I mean, we are business to business company. Why guys are you doing EPR? Because our EPR is not applicable to you. But we do think that is important to do. You know, we have done since 20 years and we are continuing to do that because we do believe that is the right thing to do. Our package, this package here, is composed by 75% of paper. And 100% of this paper is Forest Stewardship Council labeled. Uh, that means that uh, the wood, you know, the paperboard, comes from the wood, wood's responsible sources. You know? And the remaining part of it is aluminum and polymer you know, to protect against light and oxygen. You know? Our goal is to make this package the most sustainable package in the world. Okay. And uh, we are working very hard, you know, to transform this in the most sustainable package in the world. What we are doing here is that we have already uh, tested in Europe uh, to replace the aluminum layer of this package for a polymer based. Now, and we just started testing with the Max 4. This is the laboratory in, in Lund that has the most uh, shinest uh, X-rays uh, for a paper-based barrier. Mm -hmm. So we want to transform this package to 90% paperboard. You know? This cap here is also made of a uh, uh, plant-based. You know? It's made of sugar cane. You know? But not only that, you know, we are also working with some customers to have a recycle content 
of this, uh, of this package. Yeah, but we do believe that the end of life is not only the right way to measure how sustainable is a packaging. We want to go further of that. We want to go for the, a packaging system, how we work in the completely supply chain, you know, that we can uh, bring better solutions in terms of decarbonization. You know? And that is something that we are already working with our customers to see how can improve, I mean, their carbon footprint in their premises. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, um, Sikachio. Thanks for your opening remarks. Now we will request uh, uh, Madam Sujata Ji. Yes. Uh, so kindly please uh, uh, elaborate. Madam, uh, uh, how much time? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, as, uh, I mean, so five minutes. Okay. Super. Um, good morning, everyone. Very, very delighted to be here. I represent uh, today uh, Hindustan Unilever and also our global Unilever um, uh, for you today. And I head the R&D for the foods and the beverages uh, uh, business. Uh, first is, we, uh, we heard Tetra Pak, you, you all uh, voted for some questions he asked. Um, I'm very delighted to be related to brands like Kisan, Kinar, and uh, Brook Bond, and uh, Quality Walls, Horlicks, all of this would be uh, very familiar to you. As a consumer, the first point of touch to your consumer is the packaging. It is either an appeal on the shelf, is it attractive enough, and then is a touch, uh, do they feel, is it giving a cue that it is going to be a high quality product, and in use, is it going to be convenient, and also across the entire use until, until the last drop, is it delivering to the promise that the brand is talking about. Yeah, and the packaging, and we talked about sustainability and one of the challenge for people in research and development and in general for companies, how do we, de how do we be forced for good by no at the same time without costing the earth and also deliver the taste which consumers will not be willing to compromise for. And that is where uh, packaging and the design of the packaging, technologies in packaging plays a huge role. So I'll a uh, little bit give a perspective of how in Unilever we look at this. And uh, I want to start this with uh, setting a context of two ma major challenges that is primarily a driver for technology advancement uh, for packaging. So the first one is about plastic. Uh, already we heard a lot from um, uh, Professor, uh, Mr. Simons. And uh, the, if you look at it, plastic is one of the best material with which we can take quality food to the consumer. And also it is one of the material that is having the lowest uh, carbon footprint. But a uh, lot of this plastic is going into uh, the waste and that is something we need to stop. If not, that's going to lead to the global warming and eventually the goodness is not going to happen. So keeping plastic in the circular economy is something we are very, very committed to. And uh, this is where uh, we, our approach to circularity in uh, plastic or in our plastic packaging is uh, threefold. Uh, use less plastic, lighter design, design so that it is using less plastic, and to use better plastic, whether it is recycled, recyclable, recycle ready, compostable, uh, or biodegradable, and also to use alternates like uh, uh, paper packaging or metal cans. And in doing all this, in the consumer product industry where we cater to the, uh, uh, the riches and also to be catered to, uh, to make it affordable to the bottom of pyramid, we need to ensure we are able to do that without uh, uh, a major cost impact to the products. So that is something many of you said, you will not be pay, willing to pay that extra penny if for, a, for a sustainable packaging. That is another area where technology advancement and industries need to come together to be able to invest, to build scale and capacity so that we are able to deliver this ambition uh, at an affordable cost. And uh, to make this happen in Unilever, we have a, our sustainability commitment. We have committed that 100% of our packaging will be uh, the uh, reusable, 
recyclable or compostable by 2025. And the way this designing and to meet uh, this target, we, so we call something called eco-design. So that is a tool that we start from a very early stage of an innovation, and that is the fundamental with which we design our entire innovation uh, cycle. So th the second major challenge I want to also call out is food waste. And uh, according to an FSSAI uh, survey, uh, it's, it's said that one third of food that is produced in India is wasted. And again, uh, packaging can play a very big role, especially the shelf lives, uh, if you are able to address, uh, to be able to deliver, uh, extend the shelf life, this is going to play a huge role. And another uh, uh, statistics that uh, was, uh, uh, that shook me up is also the, uh, the UNEP Food Waste Index Report of 2021, which said uh, household waste in India is estimated to be 50 kg uh, per person annually. So almost 26% of food waste is generated in 2019 came from the food service industries. So these, the packaging again, by designing the right packaging, we have a huge opportunity to be able to reduce food waste. This comes from the innovations with which until the last drop, if you are able to help the consumer to be able to use uh, the product by designing the right packaging, then we will be able to reduce food waste. And again, in Unilever, we have a, I'll be done in one minute, uh, we have a commitment of reducing food waste by 50% uh, across the entire value chain. And some of this we'll discuss later during the discussions, how packaging innovations and technologies play a huge role in making this happen. And also what in future, what are the technology disruptions required in the future, how industry like us can play a role in investment in, uh, along with the building an ecosystem or partnerships to be able to build capacities and scale up are some things that we will discuss during the panel discussions. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the context. Yeah, thank you, Good morning, Namaskar to all of you. First, I'd like to begin by complimenting both my panelists. I think Cassio and Sujazadi, you did a fantastic job. And the one thing that was very clear to me, I've worked with uh, Coca-Cola for the last two years. And the one thing is in India or across the world, all of us as companies want to come together and work together, not just with, in the private sector, but also with the public sector and the consumer to make sure that we live in this very responsible and sustainable world. And if I look at you know, Coca-Cola, and I represent Coca-Cola for India and Southwest Asia, um, I look after something called the public affairs, sustainability, and communications. So I work across with teams like Sujataji's across my company and the technical teams. And we are looking at how we can innovate in terms of packaging to make it more and more sustainable, whether it's in terms of cans, whether it's in terms of plastics, whether it's in terms of compostable straws, whether it's in terms of refillable glass. So Coca-Cola, actually, its products are all beverages. So we don't have, most of our packaging is, you know, recycled PET, uh, refillable glass, and cans. Um, we don't have the multi-layer plastics. And I'd like to begin by something very important that the government did this year. This year, in, two th in February, the government passed the plastic waste management rules and the extended producer responsibility, which has allowed all of us to have an ease of doing business in terms of sustainable food packaging. So a company like ours, which says that whether it's every can, every uh, bottle that we consume or we sell, we want to make sure we recycle that back. Not just in terms of you know, two years or three years, we are looking at it already in this country. So when it's this year, we introduced, because of the government again, um, you know, the RPET in food grade use. So we started, of course, with water. And this is one of our innovations that we did. And the Kinley water, we started it with the one liter packs. We started it with the 750 liter packs and the 250 liter. And now we're taking it across all our products. Because it's not just water that we do. We look at sparkling. Now, if you look at the sparkling pack, we have something called ASPP, so which is basically your affordable small sparkling packs. In this, there is something, there's an internal technology. 
the coating technology that we use, which uses, which basically reduces the plastic utility, but also increases the shelf life of that product. And why are we doing this? We are working with companies like Tetra Pak in order to do this, right? Then we have something called the dry nitrogen hot fill pack, which is, replaces the use of oxygen, increases the shelf life, and then due to the pressurized packaging, it, the, you know, the pl uh, plastic quantity that is required is much, much less. Now, all these innovations have been possible, I think, also because we as industries have come together. Now, if I take an example of the compostable straw which the government introduced last year, uh, I, think the comp I think all the companies here, whether it was the Amul or whether it was Mother Dairy or Pepsi or us, we were in complete panic, I remember, because the supply chain was not available. So what happened is when the straws, actually the paper straws came out, it was soggy, it was you know, wet. Now, companies like us, given the, you know, the learnings, because at, the, at that point, we had to actually import this compostable straw material. Now we are, you, you know, we've made sure that the supply chains have started to be prepared and we will come up with a compostable straw packaging in tandem with all our partners, which will be a straw quality and um, you know, which has functional requirements, which is actually compostable under the industrial composting conditions. Now, in terms of packaging and plastic responsibility, today companies, whether it's a Coca-Cola or our bottling partners, when you are investing in a country like India or Southwest Asia, every year, you know, ever, you know, since COVID, in the last two years, a company like Coca-Cola has invested, along with its bottling partners, nearly a $2 billion in this country. You, we have over 60-something manufacturing facilities. Our facilities, where are they? They are actually not in the first-tier cities. They are in the second tier, third tier, fourth tier. They provide employment, but also they what are we doing with these facilities? Each one of these new facilities that are coming up, we are making sure they actually translate into sustainability by design, which means you use building materials, which are of the top quality in terms of platinum LED. We are using solar completely, and we are connecting to the, you know, the state grids. We are also using EVs. Because in terms of transportation, Coke across the world and in India has probably one of the biggest networks. So it's our responsibility, right? Because that's where it starts from. And then, of course, in terms of the supply chain, how do we build the supply chain? Example, in terms of plastic. Government passed the law in February, and BIS allowed us to use food grade, uh, our pet and food grade plastic. But the challenge for us, we realized was that most of this was being turned into yarn and being sent out, ex you know, exported out of the country. Mm -hmm. So we've now come up, you know, working with, there are like nearly 18 startups in the sector. We are working with them, investing with them, and we are setting up our own plans in terms of com not just recycling, but the entire circularity part of it. So in India today, we collect 100% of our plastic. And now, we are working with our bottling partners to utilize it in all our products. So we as I said, we started with water, gone on to the red coke, and over across the years, we will spread it across each and every product of ours. Now, in across the world, 90% of the Coca-Cola com company's consumer packaging is recyclable. So we work with different organizations, whether it's in the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the Circulate Capital, um, Loop Industries, um, you know, why? Again and again and again to make sure that the packaging is sustainable. Um, in terms of just how do we make sure that once these bottles are rec recycled, there is a low carbon footprint. We are working with you know, the MRFs across various states to do that. We've also set up a blockchain technology in terms of tracing our literally from the collection point to the segregation down to how we are recycling. So we've done it across each and every one of our bottling facilities. Um, you know, I'd just like to end by saying that I think it, it is our responsibility as an industry to make sure that our consumers get what they deserve in terms of packaging, in terms of the best quality of our beverages or our foods. So we are here to work together, not just with the government, but with the private sector, and to make sure this happens. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, madam. Uh, so now, uh, today we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Chetan and Mr. Ganeshan uh, from uh, Well Beverages uh, Packaging. So, 
प्लीज गिव योर ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स सर थैंक यू सो मच सो यू हैव 5 मिनट्स सर यस गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन थैंक यू टू ऑल द पैनलिस्ट आई थिंक दे हैव सेट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट वेल एंड फॉर अस टू जस्ट जंप इन एंड क्लोज इट वेरी क्विकली सो as uh, mr karyo mentioned that uh, kasio mentioned that uh, the consumer survey yes uh, he is globally yes that's the case uh, we ball as an organization is a 140 year old organization it, not many people would hear would know about ball right so we are into a two piece uh, aluminum cans and a sustainable packaging we have been dealing with this uh, for many years now so Uh, we we are the pioneers you could say in one of the uh, the most sustainable packaging which is available globally and ball as an organization has got a market share of almost 65% globally and uh, in india also we have been doing quite well for since last many years till time ball has entered into the in the country right so we worked with all the bigger organizations like coca cola hul globally and we have been uh, promoting this sustainability cause uh, with them for for a larger period of time so and, and uh, with how mr casio uh, question and just a few people raised and most of them answered yes they are ready to pay a premium on the uh, for the environmental and climate change and they are ready to pay a premium on sustainability fronts so that's a good thing to have right so that's something which yes uh, this group is really nice to have said and raised their hands completely yes but it's it's not reflected in india so far to be very honest so it's just that uh, we are working towards it uh, if you look at uh, the uh, the aluminum as an option uh, the can as an option of packaging uh, during covid we were not even uh, one can cap per capita consumption in india post covid we've uh, tripled it to three cans per capita consumption so that speaks a volume about the awareness that can has created in the market in the consumers mind post covid the safety firstly for the for uh, of the cans as compared to any other packaging substrate is something which is you know highly appreciated by the consumers now after the covid so i mean everything uh, is very relatable because whenever there is a difficult times people then try to understand the premiumization they need to pay for being safe and sound that time so that's what has helped cans in a way so if you look at aluminum is the perfect solution in terms of uh, the sustainability for india the reason being aluminum is 100% recyclable that's the only packed substrate which is 100% recyclable and till date 75% of the aluminum which is been ever produced is still in the market it's still available here which really shows how much of the environmental safety and concerns are addressed because of aluminum so that's a basic uh, basic advantage of an aluminum can so when an empty can is recycled it is back on the shelf within 60 days again so that's something which is you know a, a chain or a value chain which is provided by the aluminum supplier and the aluminum manufacturers like us and the customers like coke or hul which is into these recycling thing secondly uh, if you look at the epr there is no epr coming on aluminum cans so that's something which is going to be a really really helpful in terms of uh, uh, because it's 100% recyclable the value of uh, aluminum is way too high in the market so people are wanting it wanting to recycle those cans again because they get value out of it india being an unorganized market there is a lot of challenge on getting these cans back and uh recycling those cans the challenge is not getting those cans back it's very easy we do 100% of the cans are getting back on the shelf because of the value that it gives the challenge is getting back into the beverage packaging because these cans are generally being used by the other industries because they pay a pay a premium to the aluminum can uh, the aluminum coil suppliers and all of those so they get it back so a industry like an automobile would benefit more there because they pay a premium whereas what we are trying to now develop is the circular economy a complete real circular economy in india wherein we have tied up with the local chains like to local people like kabadi wala which is in mp which is picking up those and getting the cans back uh, segregated and bailed and completely sent we send it back to our supplier and then we get the finished goods back as a can on shelf within 60 days so we have initiated those processes in india which in indian market is very very difficult to do 
but we have initiated that, we have taken those initiatives and we are sure by 2030 our target is that 100% of the can which is recyclable is coming back to us as an aluminium can and not going anywhere else. So that's what our target is. Thus aluminium is one of the most sustainable packaging format. In terms of innovations, uh, if you look at aluminium, it gives you the complete body of the can to you, you know, uh, provide the marketing support or provide the communication that the brands want. And we have a different kind of uh, setup wherein we have a lot of innovations like uh, HD printing, then there is a 3D printing, then there is thermochromic, uh, which can be, you know, the, the can changes its color when it is kept under sunlight, it changes its color when it is cooled and it is at the optimum temperature. So all these innovations are possible. In fact, globally, we have now got aluminum bottles as well, which is one of the, the biggest breakthrough, you could say, in terms of uh, getting the spirits in can and category, opening up those categories which were very, very difficult to open earlier. So these kind of uh, innovations are now going to come to India as well. We are working on those lines. And it will be shortly, you will see that all those innovations come into India. The first thing that we've done now is open the category uh, of uh, dairy, which is uh, the retortable cans. Earlier, it was a mindset that uh, two-piece aluminum cannot withstand the kind of uh, temperature or pressure that the retort cans or a dairy product needs to have. Uh, we've, we've done that. So we've just launched the product with a retortable cans in India and uh, we are doing trials with some of the biggest customers of the India. So that you will see very shortly that these are the, uh, these, this breakthroughs will take you know, aluminum to a very big height, even though it is a premium product, but it will definitely give you a big height. So if you look at all the categories that now can is available, it was earlier you know, perceived that can can only be good for beer since it's a high priced or high value product. Beer of course is there. Now we have got into categories like the fabs, the flavored alcoholic beverages, the dairy, dairy products, and the milk-based products, and juices as well. So Del Monte is one of the largest customers of the juice brand in India, which is also now in two-piece cans. Then there are a lot of other players, like even Coke, or HUL, we are in discussions with HUL as well for launching their brands in the, uh, in the dairy category with, with cans. So, so in, in overall, if you look at the pack substrate, this is one of the most sustainable pack substrate and uh, one of the most recyclable pack substrate. So with this, I would like to hand over back to yeah. Mr. Katyar. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so uh, much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chetan. Uh, it was uh, uh, a very good uh, round. Uh, we, we understood that what exactly the companies are doing on more into the circularity, sustainabilities, and bringing a new product into the market. Uh, but uh, uh, let's, let's have a, uh, some dis a discussion on this. Uh, so first, as uh, uh, Mr. Keshu has mentioned, and uh, Tetra Pak, when we talk about the Tetra Pak, I think no, 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 none of the in hall that uh, for them it's a new product. Uh, and it's uh, covered a lot of uh, market in the country as well. And in his uh, discussion, he has also mentioned that uh, there is a need to replace uh, some of the layers which is there in the Tetra Pak in order to make it a fully compostable. I believe so, you talk about, uh, even though it is a 25% which is not a paper, but it makes a huge significant uh, difference uh, when we talk about the end of life options. So as you correct, uh, mentioned that the R&Ds are going on bringing a 90 per, more than 90% uh, uh, paper based. But the concern is that most of the time the Tetra Pak, these kind of packaging used for a stringent food packaging application where we really need a barrier. And uh, the barrier where uh, can compete with the more than PETs, uh, uh, and, uh, and if you're really going to bring a compostable material, what do you think about uh, managing a barrier? And uh, this is the one aspect I would like to understand. And the second is, uh, why going for a multi-layer packaging? Uh, because the recyclability is an issue uh, when we are going to have the different pa layers with the different kind of uh, materials that lead to be the difficulty in the recycling, what do you think that how could able to minimize, why not the mono layer, uh, some kind of uh, this material has to be brought in into the uh, market which can really help to, uh, as far as the end of life option are concerned. Over to you. Thank you. Good to see that uh, all our colleagues are in the same journey ahead to bring the most sustainable package in the world. Yeah. Look, this is a technology, a SEP technology. You know? So 
we, the benefit of uh, a SEP technology is that uh, you don't need a cold chain to transport our package and the product. And you can reach the remotest areas of a country, you know, with a, a septic uh, package. So, uh, just for you to know, today the, in, uh, the Indian army in, in, in India consumes uh, one lakh of uh, milk, you know, produced in Tetra Pak packagings by uh, organizations like Amul and, and KMF. So we need a barrier for that. You know, it's part of uh, the ASEP technology. And um, yes, we can uh, replace the aluminum side with a different barrier. And that's what I mentioned that uh, it's part of the innovation from Tetra Pak to bring together the universities in our, uh, in our uh, development centers, you know, to study together with the Max4 laboratory. These guys, you know, they are able to study a product you know, or a component in the nanoparticle side. You know? So the idea of that is to replace part of, uh, of uh, the aluminum uh, and also the plastic barrier for paper-based barrier. So preliminary tests has showed a success, you know? and we need to see how it going to evolve in the market with, uh, with uh, uh, more packages, more samples that can ensure and uh, make sure that uh, we continue to be on a set package you know, and uh, to be transported you know, with the food safety required. So, uh, I mean to say, what uh, my apprehension is that the, the recyclability and second is, uh, as you mentioned, uh, bringing a nanoparticle into it, uh, how many nanoparticles uh, bringing, uh, coming to the package uh, are is, is approved? Uh, in fact, uh, there are lot of investigation, lot of uh, research has to be done because bringing a material b without uh, 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 proper understanding and uh, that is also a big challenge. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Su uh, Sujata. Uh, uh, it was really wonderful uh, talk you have given, but uh, uh, you were stressing uh, more on to the, the thin plastic. And other side, if you are really going to for a package, not do the structured package, but if you go to the loose, loose packaging, food packaging, we eliminated that we should not go to the thin because of the, again, another end of life options and there is a uh, criticality and problem associated to it. Uh, what exactly you wanted to say when you say that the thin packaging in order to reduce the cost of uh, packaging? Okay. So to uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, so thank you for this great question. So uh, to clarify, we didn't, I didn't say you need to use a thin packaging. Uh, we complied to the regulations, 100% compliance to regulations in any packaging that we use. But the, are we over-engineering the packaging? Am I using a packaging that is more thicker than what is really required for the product? So we call it uh, the, the design for value and design for experience and for performance. So when you look at that, wherever we think it is over-designed because of the technology that were available earlier, but now advanced technologies are available where I can make it thinner, but without any compromise on the functionality, especially the barrier properties or the shelf life, then why would cost the earth? Then you more look at reduce that the, the cost on the packaging, which is going to be good for the consumer, they can pay lesser, and also it's going to be good for the earth, because I'm sending less plastic. Yeah. So that is what primarily we look at, that is by design, that's the clarification. Yeah, you mean to say without compromising that absolutely, uh, the absolutely, uh, it absolutely. has to be brought it down to absolutely. the optimum yes. uh, thickness. So, so I would, it's not, I think it's not thinner packaging, it is lightweighting. Lightweight yeah. optimum. Lightweighting without any compromise on the product functionality. And of course, that is where technology comes into play. We actually work together with partners to be able to develop packaging that can deliver the barrier properties even when at a, uh, at a lighter weight. Thank you very much, Pam. Uh, another, uh, uh, I'm eager to ask one. When we talk about the package, we are talking about, okay, the, the structure package and the label on it. And most of the time when we see the level, when we put the level, we are going to bring another plastic onto it. And how you look into it, when you talk about the optimization and opti optimization food packing, why not the label is integrated onto the 
package, rather it's going to be a separate packaging onto the... Yeah, package. so they, it's a combination of both technologies. I think if we have several of our packaging options where it is part of the packaging itself, mm -hmm. and there are some where you might not be able to do it for various different reasons because of the type of production lines you have, because of the logistics that we have, and that is where we, uh, we put it on top of it. But more and more, we are also trying to look at how do we, across the entire value chain, how do we reduce, how do we advance both our manufacturing lines as well as our packaging technology so that the, if there is an opportunity to reduce somewhere, we don't leave it. Yeah, yeah. I would more put it yeah, that thank way. Thank you very much, ma'am. And, and it is a journey, right? At the end of the day, like I said, uh, the any any of this transformation you do, it's, it's going to be a cost. It is going to be a disruption. So we need to be doing it in a phased manner yeah. where we are able to balance both. Yeah. But that's a journey and that's where we are. Uh, somewhere we have find the level is in the during a processing line without adding extra uh, yes. material and that need to be also optimized Absolutely. so that uh, overall it's going to be a more... Absolutely. And uh, that requires a transformation, a, a roadmap, a phased manner, you need to transition okay, to that. Okay, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Devani, ma'am. Uh, I would really like to ask, uh, uh, the Coca-Cola is a big brand and uh, we can see, and especially other also, PepsiCo and all, uh, I have seen, I would like to see, uh, some of the, somewhere I have seen the bottles with the green leaves on it. Uh, what exactly it conveys, the Coca-Cola conveys, that the bottle with the green leaves on it? Have you? So, um, and what is the uh, aesthetic, I mean to say, what is the genesis behind it? So when you see anything to do with green leaves on a Coke bottle, or Coke product bottle Coke, for that Coke matter, um, whether it's on a Sprite, clear bottle or um, when you see it on a Maza bottle, uh, it basically means that the, um, you know, the material used is recycled. So in India, what we've done is, um, you know, we are using material which is recycled. Uh, the challenge in India has been, of in, in a country like Sri Lanka, what we did was last year when there was an economic crisis, we completely, um, you know, changed in terms of what we call the packs and recyclability. So FYI, when you, you look at a clear bottle and a green bottle and a blue bottle, the clear bottle is always better to use because it's easier, easier to recycle. Um, so we immediately you know, changed to that. And we also used uh, paper uh, in terms of uh, labels and aluminum caps, you'll be pleased to know. Um, again, it also depends on how the government and the country responds in terms of the kind of regulations, policies, so that, uh, you know, we can all come together as a team to work, right? I mean, as you, as um, Cassio, you correctly put it, um, you know, there is the multi-layer pack, and the multi-layer pack is, it's difficult to recycle. I think the, the highest quotient of recyclability is the aluminium. The challenge with the aluminium, we would love to make sure that we, we have cans across India in our small packs, medium packs, and we're doing, you know, changing it more and more. But the cost is very high. So if, the, you know, if we can work with the government and the regulatory authorities to bring down the cost parity, it will make a huge difference. In terms of plastic, our pet has already been introduced in food grade plastic, right? But um, there's much more we can do in terms of refillable glass. Now, countries in countries like America, Europe, in Latin America, you have fountains, you have, um, you know, um, systems by which, like Bon Aqua, which is another product of ours, you actually have the filler fountains in places like China and Hong Kong, where people, you know, can go and fill their water. So I think there has to be innovation, there has to be a lot of R&D, a lot of support, and a lot of interaction between you know, different companies, different sectors, and the government to come up with, in the end, the best policy, uh, possible sustainable packaging and product for the consumer. And the bigger thing is I think the consumer needs to become more and more aware, you know? Yeah, yeah uh, th uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, another perspective also uh, that bringing these kind of uh, green, saying that we are from where the feed stock comes, uh, and most of the time when you now the trend has been set up when we are going to have the package material like a bio package, when we talk about biopolymer, biopolyethylene, bio, bio PET, and that has to be set up in order to, uh, to uh, think about a more low carbon footprint uh, and a circularity. Uh, so that is uh, there. And another thing, ma'am, because we have a bottles and we used to have a lid on top of it. And most of the time it has been found a small sachet 
and the small packages may not be related to the Coke. You have a 250 ml bottles, but most of the time, the small sachet, they used to go and the package. So what do you think uh, about uh, these kind of material, especially Coke also? That lid has to be, in, if integrated into the package here, how it's going to be helped to the, uh, uh, to the consumer and uh, in the recycling process? I'm very glad you brought this up. So last year, in fact, when the whole uh, plastic straw change happened, one of the things we had spoken to various sectors in government was the integrated, uh, you know, um, lid packaging. But at some, because the, it's easier in terms of not just collection and segregation, but recycling. And at that, you know, and we are still working with government on that. But I think that's that's the awareness, that's the kind of um, policies we need to you know, work together with the regulatory authorities and yeah. government. I, yeah. For me, I mean, we, I think we tried very, very hard last year. I think, Juhi, you are aware, you were there when, during our exercise, but we were not able to do it, and therefore we are now reworking our entire compostable straw, uh, you know, yeah. supply chain. So, and the design also matters absolutely, a lot. Absolutely. So the design has to, new, newer innovative design has to come from the industry so that uh, when we talk about the littering, especially what happened if we have the small sachet, we used to cut it. And mm. that part of the small it piece, it has yeah. to go everywhere and it's very difficult to uh, uh, take it back. No, it so, has to be, which you can So the design yeah. also ma plays a very important role when we are playing presenting a package. So I think this is also one direction where we all have to think. And uh, now I, uh, I would really request uh, 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 Ms. Chetan and uh, Mr. Uh, Ganesh, you have already mentioned that what is the advantage of uh, uh, the aluminum can. And it's good that uh, your, say, your cons consumption has been grow grown three to fold. Uh, the only concern is that uh, what do you think about the uh, the the recyclability in terms of as far as uh, our uh, India is concerned. Empty can they throw in the dustbin. See, the unfortunate thing in India, what is happening is that when they consume alcohol beverage like beer, they preserve the bottle and they sell to Kabadiwala along with the newspaper and they get two to three rupees for that. In fact, aluminum can also give the equal money, but people are not aware of that. They throw this in the dustbin, it goes through the uh, waste pickers and the uh, network of Kabadiwalas and the aggregators. And the, finally, the traders, they make around 130 to 140 rupees per kilo of aluminum can, the used cans. And uh, they say make ingot and say give to the automobile or our electrical sector, to everywhere because the purity is around 99% in this. And the recovery rate is around 97%. So what we are trying to do is that in India, the recycled content of can, what we supply here is 76% uh, recycled content in that. But we are getting the coil from, not from India, it is coming from South Korea because there is no capability of making aluminum coil in India. Because as mentioned by Chetan in his opening remarks, the can penetration per head in India per annum is not more than three. If you look at that China, it is 45 cans per head per annum. In Brazil, it is 140. US, it is 70. Vietnam, 170 per head per annum. Vietnam, 170. Even you may think that, okay, their economy is like that, our economy is like this, population-wise, China and India is comparable, but it is 40 and here is not even three. And talk about Egypt. Egypt, the concept, this per capita consumption is around 27 cans per head per annum. So what we need to do is that if you, someone wants to invest in India, we have to increase the per capita consumption. But that is slowly growing now in India because there is a lot of awareness on sustainability and recyclability. And the third thing is affordability. In fact, uh, Devani has mentioned about the cost of aluminum can. We are not able to compare with other packaging substrates, especially with uh, multi-layer carton and uh, PET. Of course, glass bottles are expensive. So the, today, the, uh, the young generation, they have the affordable income and the disposable income available with them. And also, they are all young population, more, more than 50% of India population is below 35 years. They have disposable income in their hand, and uh, they are able to buy, and they are aware of that. The third thing is, you know, this uh, advantage of aluminum can is that it is easy to dispose, easy to carry, there is no breakage, easy to chill, a lot of other advantages are there. So as to answer your question, what we need to do is that all the stakeholders have to come together, create awareness among the consumers that don't just throw into the dustbin, please deposit. Because today in India, there is a DRS system is also not there. 
deposit refund system, which is uh, other countries it is available. People pay its deposit for that when they buy the uh, beverage uh, package and uh, they go and deposit back, then get that money back. And uh, Goa government, they are planning to do the DRS system. In fact, they are in uh, discussion with uh, relevant stakeholders. But again, the challenge in India is that for alcohol beverage segment, one state government cannot bring the legislation because it is controlled by the respective state uh, excise policy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if they bring a bottle from Maharashtra and consume in Goa, and they can deposit there, they won't get the money for that. Yeah, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm uh, representing all the stakeholder here. So the fact that, again, when you have mentioned that the government has to have a regulation, why the government has to bring a regulation? Why not we have to bring it to the, our market strategy that bring it back to those Absolutely. strategies? Absolutely. That's what we would like to work with. That's what I, I, this one I would like to mention is here is that we don't want to just become a vendor to my brand owners. Like Coke or Pepsi, we don't want to become a vendor just like a vendor. We want to become a partner in progress. That's what I've been telling all our customers. We need to work together that you know, we will be part of your sustainability journey. In yeah. fact, when you go and talk to your stakeholders, to your investors, to your bankers, what is today, generally, you know, all the, uh, our customers, they ask, our customers, they ask, what is the recycled content of the can you are supplying? Every time I want to, because in turn, they have to convey to their stakeholder. Their board meeting, they discuss about this. So who is more sustainable in those companies only people are investing today? So our intention is that we want to increase the recycled content from 76% to 85% by 2030. To, towards our how best we can work together with our customers and consumers and other regulatory agencies. That's what we would like to work. So it is not only we are just looking at the regulation by the government, but voluntary, even though it is, there is no EPR for CAN today in India, but still we are working with the waste management company as mentioned by Chedan in Bhopal and Bangalore. We already initiated the pilot project for collection of CANs. So we are not waiting for the regulation to happen and the regulatory agency come to us. We want to voluntarily work towards that and we want to go and hand with the, uh, our consumers and customers to create that awareness how best we can further increase recycled content and how best we can further improve the sustainability quotient of aluminum cans. Yeah, uh, thank you. Can I just uh, add yeah, please, something? Please. Um, so, in fact, just before this panel, we were just discussing this. We have a partnership with Zepto. Uh, which is probably India's fastest growing, uh, you know, unicorn um, in terms of plastic bottles being recycled and, uh, you know, so we were just discussing that we should do the same with them in terms of aluminum can and I'm definitely going to work with them to initiate that because I think that's, for us, it's the need of the hour not just to work, as, as I said, with the, you know, uh, private sector but also in order to make sure the consumers have awareness and they're able to do this, you know, time and again. Thank okay. You. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, now, uh, there is a one uh, which I should not say it is a buzzword when we are using a compostability and when we talk about the compostable package here. Uh, I would just uh, ask, uh, I mean, say, give it uh, in 10, 20 seconds uh, your assessment about when we talk about the compostable packages, uh, what exactly you mean about it? Just in a few sentences, please. Yeah. I mean, to have uh, this uh, paper is compostable. As much as we go for paper, it's going to be more compostable. This is a yeah. This is a package, you know, designed for a separate product. You know, it means that uh, the design for this package, and uh, uh, although it's a multi-layer package, but it's uh, it's packing a product that is uh, has no preservatives. Is it yeah. compostable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pack the paper is compostable. This package. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot need to be done. When we talk yes, about yes, exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's still a journey for us to go for a fully compostable, renewable package. Uh, I mean. Yeah, uh, so compostable, for example, I give an example and then say what it means. For example, all of our tea bags in India, they are um, plant based and they are compostable. So the packaging that can be put along with the food based. Uh, so that is one definition of. Uh, uh, the compostable for us and that is how we develop any food grade packaging when we go into a compostable biodegradable uh, packaging with paper then our ambition is to consumers can throw it as part of a food waste so that it goes into that cycle for uh, 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 the further process. Sorry, no, no, so I, I think I already spoke about what we are doing in terms of compostable, in terms of our straws, in terms of our packaging, and for us mainly it's... Uh, you mentioned 
the yeah. industrial composting a word one yeah, word yeah. you have mentioned can you uh, please highlight on this uh, how it is different than the compostability requirement packaging package compostability requirement as far as the country is concerned whether it's going to be fit in or we have to have something no, no, uh, no, to that's do. obviously there's no question about it i mean wherever we work we f we have to work in alignment with the government wants and alignment with what the consumers want so that's what we are doing hmm. and i think uh, sujata ji is absolutely correct if you look at all our r and d and innovation centers they're like working overtime in order to not just meet in terms of government's uh, standards but it's also again what is what is the best thing for the customer and what is if we as a company don't do this we will not survive yeah uh, so here i would you. like to uh, put my perspective when we talk about the compostability and this kind of a word is very much uh, popular among all of us uh, as you correctly mentioned it out that it's a industrial compostable package or the polymer then it has to go to the particular uh, uh, framework in order to uh, see its end of life option however when we when we choose a, a package as far as the country is concerned we have to see what is the fate and what is the uh, the parameter is required in order to compostable those uh, materials i think we have to think on those lines uh, and we have to develop the p compostable plastic uh, as far as our fr framework are concerned our need is concerned that is what uh, my understanding and that uh, we have to work it out now because we have a limited time i would like to open a floor for discussion with all the members who, who are here uh, please take a question at least one question from our eminent panelist Thank you, panelists. Uh, my name is Vikas. I work with GlaxoSmithKline Consumer Healthcare as head of R&D. Uh, my question is open. Anybody can answer, maybe. Uh, see, the consumer in today's world, they want sustainable packaging. No? Everybody prefers. So when I wear a hat of a consumer, I would like to buy a product which is sustainable. But when I wear a hat of a R&D head, uh, my packaging team tells me that all these options uh, are costlier. So what is the incentive? for a manufacturer to continue with the sustainable, sustainable packaging. Uh, other thing, are there any, say, options? How do we incentivize from the perspective of a manufacturer? And how can, say, government maybe support that? Thank you. Um, interesting question. <laughs> That's a challenge and a journey for, a, uh, for all of us in a, in a consumer goods company. So two things I would say what, uh, for example, in Unilever, how we state course. Uh, one is the compelling vision that this is a change that we want to bring to the world, uh, even if it means a higher cost in the beginning. But, and then when we are in the journey, built the capability, then we worked together with the partners, built an ecosystem to make a capacity and scale that eventually brought down the cost. So this is the journey and that is where I really feel building an ecosystem and multi-party collaboration where the demand increases so that automatically for a supplier the cost is going to come down. That is going to be a win-win situation. So if we all come together, then the journey and the affordability that you talk about will, automat will, be, uh, will be happening. And the other one is, of course, the expertise of the, the packaging colleagues that we have who work together with the, uh, the packaging uh, suppliers to come up with the novel materials that can make it affordable. One example I want to call out is the metallized OPP, which uh, is something we are using in, in, the, fo in, the, uh, in, in the place of a foil. And uh, as Unilever, we have done a pioneering work to work together with uh, suppliers to make it, uh, to democratize it, and also to make it a very high barrier uh, properties, which enable us now, um, and at scale it has been built where the cost, what we started with and what we have now, is making it to be economically viable. Can I? Yes, please. Can I compliment on that? I mean, uh, I, I have mentioned uh, here and uh, for us it's, uh, I mean, it's, yes, there is a huge investment behind of uh, that. Tetra Pak is, is, is investing 100 million euros per year on the sustainability side, and we want to go for it. But I can tell you that uh, it's not going to work because it's not uh, a responsibility of uh, only for the industry side. 
You know? It's a collective effort here. You know? And consumer plays an important role in this side because it, is, it will not work if we bring the most sustainable package in the world, but at the end, we don't have segregation. We don't have collection, you know. Yesterday I had a round the table with the Minister of Commerce and Industry, and I just made one request to him when I got my, my time that, in that meeting, you know. Minister, we need your support and we need the government support to make awareness within the society to segregate and collect more, you know. Because if we don't do it, you know, if we don't have the responsibility of the whole chain, you know, sustainability is not going to work. Yeah, thank you. Uh, is there any yeah, question? Yeah, please. Can I add one, yeah, one please, point? Please. See, on the uh, bringing down the cost of sustainable packaging. Yeah, sorry. To bring down the cost on sustainable packaging. See, unfortunately, in India, what is happening is that for packaging industry, there is no line ministry. For example, for food processing, there is a MOF is there. Like for different sectors, you know, there is line ministries are there, and they go and address their issues there. And uh, there are also PLA schemes. Yesterday, in the meeting with the ministers, the food processing uh, industry, they all talk about the PLA schemes. Okay. And second thing, now we look at the uh, chip manufacturers to bring down the cost of that to make the capability in India itself. There is a PLA scheme for chip manufacturers. But unfortunately, for the packaging segment. Whoever is making the sustainable packaging thing here, there is no incentives from the government side. So if they're able to promote such things, more and more competition will happen in India. As I rightly mentioned, they have any, for example, uh, aluminum packaging. The more and more players should be there, competition should be there, in the local para manufacturing should happen today. They mentioned coil is coming from outside India. So once you increase the local consumption, the local production happens, then the cost of the packaging thing also will come down. Then the our brand owners, in turn, the consumers also will get benefited. So we all have to work towards, towards that, and we need to convince the government to bring some policies, because one side the government is talking for lifestyle for environment, sustainability, and those things and all. But other side, they're not bringing conducive policies where we can make some manufacturers, you know, that to get help them in producing more and more sustainable packaging in India itself. Yes, so, uh, I have a thought to comment from Mr. Luis Bedoya. He's from uh, UNIDO, ec based in Ecuador, uh, South America. And uh, in uh, continuation of this uh, discussion, he would like to add or question perhaps uh, that, you know, keeping in mind that, you know, the Agenda 2030 is still a few years, seven years away, but the climate change is aggravating uh, uh, rapidly. So uh, why are we, no, all of us, not thinking, especially for the esteemed panelists, of you know more targeted short-term policies? He's citing an example of uh, you know uh, wastage in uh, uh, food packaging residues, and he says in uh, in terms of uh, when you consider circular economy, in terms of you know circular economy, any re uh, residue or wastage is a design fault. So why are we all not thinking about, you know, addressing these in short-term targeted strategi strategies and ways? Thank you. Maybe I can give one example. Yes, please uh, uh, go ahead. Have we understood when we talk about the recyclability, it's not going to be 100% and it's going to be have a ma um, many uh, side streams and uh, that's what you wanted to know. That can you please address that, how we can uh, utilize yes. So uh, I think specifically your question, one part of the question is on the food waste, right? And how do we, uh, the... Yeah, see the, uh, the uh, one big barrier also in recycling packaging is the contamination of the leftover food, uh, right? And that is where many innovations that uh, is also in the design element, how can we bring in so that um, consumers will be able to use until the last drop that, and also can we come up with, uh, this is something we are working on and already in, in, in US market in helmets, we have introduced a technology where there is a coating onto the, the helmets bottle, which prevents the, the product to be sticking to the bottle. And then they can, and also you design the packaging in such a way that the make the mouth wider 
and uh, the design uh, so that everything flows out. So these are some entire end-to-end -end design elements, consumer-facing design elements which are built in, which first ensures food waste is minimized and they are able to use until the last drop. And also end-to-end -end supply chain in recycling the packaging, the contamination from the food is minimized. That also enables to be able to recycle, uh, to get a recycled plastic. So this is something, uh, is a very important element. I'm glad you touched upon. Uh, already we are working on some of these elements. Thank you. I, I hope this is what you really like. Yeah, I can understand that uh, there are residues and uh, uh, it's there. Uh, very many uh, uh, technological interventions are in place in order to brought it down, there is how to recycle back, whether up, is, uh, up scaling or down scaling to these kind of materials. Uh, so depending on what kind of the package it is, uh, it is there and uh, various organization, R&D as well as industrial organization in the country, they are working on those lines to how to make the value out of the waste packages as much as possible, uh, how, but without a compromising a carbon footprint. That is also very important, otherwise incineration is the best uh, and simplest process to do it, uh, but we would not like to go for it uh, because of the, these all fundamental reasons. Today, uh, other members? Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, just a small yeah, question. Yeah, please Thank you. Just a small question. Uh, how is our complete uh, industry ready to introduce, uh, because whenever the vendor is being selected, we are having a T1, L1 kind of cri criteria for that. Can we introduce a S1 also, sustainable one, so that it will be beneficial for each and every one and we can have the circularity surely in the system. So it's more or less a similar question that how we can phase by, we put it a phase manner, like a short term, medium and uh, long term goal in order to, uh, which we all have. So that has already that we all need to understand is that, again, you know, we have, I think in India, we need to have much more consumer awareness, number one. We have that perhaps in the first year cities, but maybe in the local languages, maybe the local, you know, governments need to talk much more about it because if today you look at the kind of plastics which are used across in India, one is of course your plastic bottles which are the most easily returnable as you can see because that's commercially viable, right? But the challenge is your sachets, your packets which have the multi-layer plastics as you were talking about. Um, you know, and how do we work with the government to ensure and you know, you talked about line ministry. My bigger challenge in terms of food packaging I find is today what food processing ministry is doing and what environment ministry is doing and what commerce and industry are doing or what health is doing. I think they all are doing the great things, but they're perhaps not working together as one system, one unit. So in, in this budget, they introduced something on the, called the green credit uh, scheme in MOEFCC, which is the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Um, we are still waiting to find out what it means because that is something which can, we can utilize mm -hmm. in terms of sustainable packaging, in terms of sustainability, in terms of all our products. But I think somewhere um, that one system approach for sustainability packaging products, it needs to be much more cohesive and uh, collaborative. Um, but I think we are getting there. It's been a, a great journey for all of us and I think we are getting yeah, there. I'll add on one bit yeah. on that. Uh, you add one more from, from the, uh, 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 the audience perspective, the smart packaging. Correct. What is smartness uh, is really looking forward to bring into the packages so that uh, uh, partly uh, his question will also. Sure, yeah. So first on, uh, I, I, I think I didn't touch upon when you earlier asked uh, the short term, long term targets. I think many of the companies do have short term and long term targets. For example, I shared by 2025 is the target we had taken, 100% of our packaging will be uh, recyclable, compostable or reusable and we are we are very much into the journey. We have come from nowhere to almost 70% uh, of our packaging globally in that journey. And uh, the, uh, 
The second element you had touched upon is also the PCR, like uh, the food, wa the packaging waste, uh, how we can reuse. So that's where we are as industries, we are also uh, collaborating and funding startups who can start to build capacity for that. And one of the big unlock that need to come in foods, now recycled plastic, we have a regulation to use in PET, but we also have to make uh, the, get the regulation ready for in polyvolifenes, that is uh, uh, PP. And that is going to be transmitted to the industry and also how can industry and government can work together to be able to fund startups to start building the uh, capability and capacity so that by the time regulation is in place, we already have uh, the capacity for it. And again, as uh, HL, uh, we have been working with Banyan Nation and other companies who have been very, very uh, proactive in building and willingness and the purposeful willingness to be able to build these uh, capabilities. So that is one thing I want to touch upon. And the long-term goal is net zero, which is by uh, uh, 2039, uh, we want to be scope one, scope two, scope three, net zero, but uh, those targets uh, will be announced by companies after the SPTI validation. So we do have, I want, I want to assure you, uh, companies are becoming a lot more responsible. And also earlier, she talked about how government is uh, enabling this. So this is coming up and a lot more, uh, many of us would have been in the journey, we have seen how much it has traveled. I, I really feel pleased by that and I really feel it is a green future. I feel optimism about that. Now the sec, you want to add anything or intelligent packaging I'll touch upon. And okay, then. so ma'am when you would like to have intelligent smart packaging, yes. we have also seen in the backdrop there is the oranges and the fact that uh, when now there is a need for edible packaging also and how the edible packaging is going to reduce the load of the secondary packaging, what you have, have, have it. So that is also if you would like to touch upon it. Sure. Quickly, Maybe I'll start uh, with so a that. very quick story on the... Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, so on the edible packaging, of course, uh, this is something we are all investing uh, in that and in, uh, in R&Ds. One thing I want to share there is when there was COVID, um, we worked with... Uh, uh, the the seaweed, the packaging from seaweed, which uh, is totally edible, uh, we because uh, consumers were ordering from out. So ketchups and other sauces we packed into these um, uh, edible packages, and that was home delivered. So these are happening in a little smaller scale when there is a, uh, a situation where the the we need to use it. But we are building capabilities. We are yeah. working together with partners to scale sure. up, and. Uh, uh, then the second one, for me, the most important thing in an intelligent packaging, especially for India, is about uh, tamper-proof uh, tamper and also um, spurious products are, uh, is, is a big issue in India. So how do we come up with uh, uh, like use packaging to be able to prevent uh, 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 the spurious products and also traceability? So this is the, one of the biggest element of uh, traceability uh, on uh, smart packaging. Then, of course, the other things that come on coating that many of us talked about for functionality and also like antimicrobial coatings to be able to enhance the shelf life or uh, uh, nitrogen flush to increase the freshness. So there are many, many elements where yes. innovations yeah. Thank uh, you. are there. Ma'am, I'm really very sorry because uh, from organizer side, uh, time is quite uh, limited. But I really would like to conclude uh, with the remark that the ancient time also we are using a packaging. There are a packaging for a long term, for a, big, a larger self life, but for a short self life also. Now it has, to, we have to think that if the food is required a self life for a six hour, why we would like to make a package for a six months? Do we, we also practice the many, the, the reasons, regional and state wise kind of a sustainable packaging and in, uh, in ancient time and we have to think of that how can we can brought it, those packaging especially for a short term, uh, for sh uh, short term self life. With this uh, remark, I would like to thanks to all the extreme panelists here. Today they have put present in this uh, uh, hall. Thank you very much. And uh, you know all the uh, uh, panelists' uh, details. If you have any specific questions, kindly write to them. And we will be going to deliberate on this. With this, I would like to uh, I'm sorry, request to the organizer to take over.
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, panel. This has been really engaging. It is only when a panel is this engaging that even 75 minutes feels short. Thank you very, very much, everybody. A small memento for everybody on behalf of the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. Uh, and uh, thank you, everybody who has been here today. You guys have been a fantastic audience. At least I would like to say that on behalf of the panel. Uh, thank you, everybody. This has been really, really great. Thank you. Thank you.